Hello everyone, welcome back to the Plunder Den. In this week's episode, we're going to paint uh, a unit of Freebooters. So this is the first time really I've painted miniatures on this uh, channel. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about painting techniques in a, in a minute here and painting miniatures. Uh, but let's, uh, let's talk about a little bit what a, what a Freebooter is. So essentially a Freebooter, I would say, is more like a mercenary. Uh, you get them in the English faction box for the game of Blood and Plunder. Uh, but uh, they can be in the Illini Line faction, they can be pirates, uh, they can be uh, even added to King Golden Cap, who's a native commander uh, as a support unit. So freebooters are they're kind of like your mercenaries. They can kind of uh, work in any force. Uh, so they're a really versatile uh, team here. Uh, they have a lot of different abilities. They're kind of a jack-of-all-trade. So let's just take a look at the, one of their game cards. So this is from the Pirate uh, Hunter faction. So... Uh, some of them vary depending on what faction you have them in, um, but this this particular card they have ball and shot, uh, uh, they have mass, uh, sorry marksmen, uh, fast reloads, sailors, and hard charges. So that's uh, some of the abilities that it has on here. Um, it, they have uh, uh, melee weapons, they have uh, sidearm pistols, they have uh, long range muskets. And they're good sailors, uh, so uh, and they have quick reloads. So they have a lot of uh, uh, pluses on their side, uh, and they're a good uh, unit to round out your force if you're looking for. Well, what do I need to fill out this force? And uh, freebooters are definitely uh, a way to go. Uh, so they're definitely something that I use quite often, and uh, I. Uh, find them very useful so let's take a look at the final product here so I got it on this dock here um, I'm gonna try to turn this around without dropping them all <laughs> uh, but I just want to get you guys a good uh, look at these now if you're wondering about this dock uh, that might uh, be something I do in a future episode uh, I do want to build some more docks and uh, I know I have had some people ask me about that uh, and that's something we could do as a, a terrain uh, tutorial. Um, this is mostly made of dowels and popsicle sticks uh, and maybe we'll do that in a separate video. But in this video we're just going to mainly cover these uh, miniatures. So you're probably wondering why they got a green and red theme. Uh, mainly because I'm going to gift these freebooters. So I'm going to uh, be uh, giving these to a community member as as a gift so i, I really uh, wanted to have a little bit of a christmas feel to it but they definitely have an english more of an english uh a feel uh, but they could be a part of the pirates could be part of anything right any kind of faction freebooters are like i said mercenaries they can add them to anything um so let's talk a little bit about uh miniature painting in general so I'm certainly not the authority in miniature painting. I've only been doing it for a couple of years. Uh, in this tutorial, probably not when you the, the crystal brush or anything like that. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I think uh, I've learned a lot of different techniques over the years, uh, over these past, past two years. Uh, and I, I really have a lot of people to thank uh, and so many, I, you know, I, I can't name them all off on here. Um, but uh, definitely a lot of the community members in the Blood and Plunder community have been very uh, supportive and helpful, answering questions. Uh, definitely, if you need something answered, they'll answer it for you. Uh, there's somebody that knows the answer. Uh, and they've really uh, steered me in, in the right direction and helped me be a, a better painter. Um, I've also gone outside our community and in all sorts of different areas. So I've kind of tried to learn techniques from all sorts of different communities to help me improve my uh, painting uh, skills. Certainly two years ago when I started painting this, maybe a little bit more than two years, but uh, it was pretty rough. Uh, my miniatures did not look good and uh, I learned a lot from there and uh, I, I've improved uh, I think a lot uh, and uh, so much that I, I feel I can help others uh, with what I've learned. So I'm kind of taking all these things that have been passed on to me um, and kind of put it all together and, and try to help uh, others uh, paint miniatures. Uh, so if, if this can be any help to anybody uh, that that's the whole purpose of this video. All right, uh, so if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button uh, and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and give us uh, get first-hand information of when I do these projects. Uh, and uh, and uh, I really, really appreciate the support, guys. So let's get down to the table and let's start uh, painting.
Okay, so let's take a look here. Here's our package of freebooters. This is pretty much how they, uh, all our packages come from Firelock Games in this plastic case. Usually you get uh, four miniatures uh, per a unit, uh, unless uh, sometimes you get a commander in it, uh, especially if you're buying the, uh, the entire faction box. There's usually a starter box, a commander, a dedicated commander in there. All right, so usually I just bend these guns. Uh, this is kind of a, it, they're pretty forgiving. The metal here is easy to bend. Uh, and just gently bend them back in place. Uh, straighten them out. No no major issues here. Uh, we will have to clean up uh, some of the uh, flashing on these, um, especially around the bases and, and uh, you know, right, run around where the guns are being held. There's usually some flashing. So I'll sand it. So I'll use the uh, exacto knife to easers. I'm just kind of showing you all the different tools I use to clean up that flashing on there, uh, and that's uh, really the first step. And then I move into uh, brush-on primer. So some people like to use uh, rattle cans and spray things on, and and that's that's entirely up to them. Uh, I I like to just uh, brush things on. It's just a little easier to clean up. All right. So then I use a uh, multi-surface black crap paint. Yes, we're going to go back to that. So I've cut, I paint really the top with the gray primer. Uh, and then I will paint the bases with this black craft paint. And it kind of creep up the leg a little bit. So I want it to be a little darker and more shadowy uh, on the base of the miniature opposed to the, the top. Now there's all sorts of different variations of priming uh, miniatures. Um, like I said, some people use uh, spray cans and, and uh, all sorts of different primers like that. And um, some people paint them entirely black and, and you can go that way uh, as well. You have some natural sh uh, shading and shadows similar to the ship builds and stuff that I've done. Uh, but I like uh, to do this uh, two-tone. So black on the bottom and kind of just the gray primer up top. So I'm just showing you a little bit more of uh, what I paint. Uh, I'm not going to show you uh, all of them. I'm probably just going to pick up one miniature at a time and, and uh, just kind of show you what I do on, on them. Just so you get an idea of how I prime them. All right, just about done here. And move on to our next step. Right, so then I move to a fur brown by Army Painter. This is kind of give us our, our base wood color, essentially. And I'm uh, just going to cover uh, right over that black. Not super thick, uh, but just enough to cover it. Uh, there'll be some of the black showing through. That's fine. Uh, again, that's just going to leave some uh, shading or shadowing. Uh, but uh, by adding the black on the bottom, that fur brown already is a little bit darker. Um, when you add that, uh, because the fur brown is a pretty, it's a pretty bright color. Uh, but we were planning on, we are going to put a, a dark wash over top of it. So we'll, we'll dull that down. But I like the richness of it. Once you add the dark tone over top, it, uh, really, really, really looks good. So just showing you what I'm painting. And I plan on doing that uh, with uh, with all of them. Now, I, I make a note that I have used a strong tone on the bottom as well. Uh, these are Ari Painter washes, uh, dark tone and, and strong tone. Uh, but I, I kind of like the dark tone uh, a little bit better. Um, the strong tone is a little more brown. Dark tone is a little more black. So gives it a really more uh, darker wood looking color. So there we go. So here's a dark tone wash. And I kind of use that flat brush that I uh, paint my ships with. And I kind of just put a generous amount on the bottom. And I'm not, oh, I'm not there to cover it you know, uh, completely. And I always go in the same way the planks are. So I always paint it uh, the same way the planks. Same way I put the fur brown on. I paint the same way the wood planks are on the base of a Blood and Plunder miniature. So I put it on pretty thick, uh, but not enough to cover it completely. 
when it dries, all that uh, wash will seep into all the uh, different uh, wood grains that are on the, the base. Uh, it gives it a, a pretty good looking uh, worn wood look uh, effect, which I really like. So it looks like I decided to do two miniatures for you this time. <laughs> but it's the same technique. I'll give you a closer view of when um, when they're dry so you can see what it looks like. This is my attempt to get closer to the camera. <laughs> uh, I'll do a little bit closer. I'll take the camera off the... So you can see a little bit on there. It's, that's how thick I put it on. Uh, you can see it's starting to seep into the wood grains already. So I just wanted to show you a little bit closer up. Uh, you notice that I painted that one miniature uh, uh, brown already on the hat there. <clears throat> and that's fur brown. Uh, when I paint a, a unit, I usually paint them at four at a time like this. And, and uh, you know, I pick a set colors and paint them all uh, with those colors. So that's uh, Barbarian Flesh. Um, that's the standard flesh color I use. Um, and then I put a flesh wash uh, over top of it. But... Uh, I use a finer brush, kind of go in there, and I paint the hands and the face. And right now, I'm not too super careful. Um, I just kind of want to make sure I cover all the flesh areas with that uh, barbarian flesh. Uh, but I, I, you know, I don't go crazy. I don't go out of the lines too much. But I, you know, if if you do, it's not it's not uh, not too bad. You can, you're gonna paint over all of it anyways. Yeah, in the early stages, I'm not overly uh, careful uh, of how I uh, paint uh, these things in. This is essentially uh, blocking colors in. Now, you can see I'm holding that base. Uh, there's a little bit of a time lapse here. Uh, I did let the uh, bases completely dry before I started picking them up uh, and painting with them. Um, I like to paint the bottoms first. And then I just kind of hold them. You can use uh, paint holders. I know Citadel has a good one. And I actually own a few of those. And I use them uh, usually when I'm doing one miniature at a time. Uh, putting a high detail on it. Uh, I'll stick it in there. Uh, but for, for this purposes, I'll probably just use uh, let the bases dry. And then I can just paint them up. So you can see I'm being a little bit careful, but again, you don't have to be uh, overly careful on this stage. Um, but just try to, you know, keep the flesh color to the parts you want to color. And make sure you turn it around, make sure you're looking upside down and <laughs> all the different areas. I, it's like sometimes I paint the one side of the hand and I forget to, uh, to go to the other side and the hand wraps all the way around and I, sometimes I miss a few areas. All right, we'll probably move on here. All right, so this is that flesh wash by Army Painter I was talking about. So once that, uh, I kind of let that barbarian flesh dry a little bit before I start slapping washes on there. You, know, you don't want to put it on there right away. I kind of end up mixing in with the flesh color, and, and you kind of, kind of a, you know, kind of a mess really. <laughs> so I let it dry a little bit, and then I. Then I I think it was about an hour, two hours. I went upstairs, watched a little television, came back down, uh, and then it was dry enough, and uh, I added the washes onto here. So I usually put it on pretty thick, and then I kind of just pull it upwards. Uh, I don't want to leave, like, giant puddles everywhere. Um, so while it's still wet, uh, I just kind of work it around and uh, make sure I don't leave any puddles on anything. I know it's probably hard to see what I'm doing there, but that, that's a kind of a bigger brush. It's not my fine brush. Uh, uh, I prefer to use a bigger brush. You can just get more wash on your brush, and you get a wider spread when you put it on there. So uh, I try not to use fine detail brushes when I, when I add the washes. I use a, a bigger brush. That white brush down there at the bottom of the screen, that's uh, more of the fine detail. This one's more of the flathead brush that, like I mentioned, that I paint my ships with. I like that flat square brush. It's good for applying washes. All 
All right, we'll probably uh, move on here. We don't need to see me uh, put washes on all of them. Okay, so now we're going to move to a color called Race uh, Bone by Citadel. It's a good off-white color. Uh, and I decided I'm going to paint uh, everybody's pants that color. So usually when I'm painting a batch of uh, or a unit like this, I'll pick a primary color that uh, the majority of the of the miniature is going to be, and I'll paint them all that. So I've decided that in this particular group, uh, they're all going to have this uh, this race uh, bone uh, on on the, on their pants. So it's kind of an off white color. I really like it, uh, and uh, I'm going to paint all of them uh, that color. So then I'll chunk out their tops, uh, and then we'll move into finer details. But uh, usually once I have that one color out, I like to just paint all the different areas. And that's kind of kind of how I do, like, my when I'm doing, like, a batch painting of uh, several units. Uh, I'll pick one color and then kind of apply it to all the different uh, units that are in it. And then I'll pick another color and then kind of add that to different uh, all the different units. So every time I use a different color, I, I kind of paint it uh, on each miniature some way or another. So they kind of look like they're related, but they sometimes they're not exactly uh, matching. Um, but these guys are going to have the same color pants, uh, I decided. And uh, so this will be a, a little bit easier. All right, so we'll move on. Uh, I plan on painting all of those four of those guys with uh, that same color. All right, so the next color is Dragon Red. So this is the next color I was planning on chunking out. Uh, and I decided to, to, you know, to give it that British, uh, more British feel. But uh, again, uh, as I meant to, mentioned in the intro, kind of a little bit of a Christmas feel to it too as well. <laughs> um, I decided I'm going to paint most of these guys' coats red. So that would be my next large color. And essentially, I'm just chunking in the colors uh uh on onto these miniatures so i am using a finer brush um but uh i'm not being super super careful uh you know if you get a little bit over in certain areas it, it's okay we're, we're gonna be we're gonna be covering everything uh, afterwards so i think maybe i'm a little sloppier in the early stages but uh it's more important to cover the entire coat. Uh, sometimes it gets a little tricky, especially when you are painting the chest of these miniatures. Uh, you'll find that uh, there are a lot of gear on there. And um, I'm not trying to worry about not painting them red. I just kind of fill in where the coat is uh, because I'm going to paint over those details afterwards. So I'm just showing you going to paint all their coats red. So now we're going to move to uh, Leather Brown. Now Leather Brown is a color that I like to use for, well, their belts and uh, buckles. And uh, and uh, it just, uh, I like the, the color of it, especially after I add washes and then I'm going to highlight it later. Uh, I really like the, the way that Leather Brown uh, looks. So I plan on painting all the details on here. Um, so the... Uh, Straps holding the sword and holding uh, uh, holding his gear around uh, around his waist and stuff. I'm, I'm going to paint it all the same color. So I'm a little bit careful here. I'm trying to not get it onto the red because then I'll have to repaint the red. Uh, but I do plan on adding a highlight to the red later. So even if you do spill a little bit, it's not, you know... I'm using that uh, wet palette that I've moved to, which is, you know, handy uh, because as you're painting, you still have all your colors on the wet palette. And you can go back and, and touch up things as you go uh, if you make it too big of a mess. Uh, I do recommend the wet palette. Uh, you know, uh, I've just started using it. Um, I think a couple of tutorials ago, I just started using it. Uh, somebody recommended it. Uh, and it really, I started using it to save paint. I was throwing out a lot of uh, expensive uh, model paint uh, because I would just stick a little bit on the plate and then uh, it would and it would dry up really quickly. Um, down in the plunder den here, <laughs> it's in kind of in my basement and uh, it really, 
the ventilation in here dries things out quickly, actually, I find, which, you know, it's okay for certain things that when you're painting, you want it to dry quickly. That comes in handy. Uh, but the unfortunate uh, side effect is it dries really quickly on your on your plate when you're using just a, just a styrofoam plate or a paper plate. So this wet palette stays nice and wet uh, and keeps your paint going. And, uh, you know, if you have to step away uh, from your miniature painting, you just put the lid back on, put your elastic band on, and uh, you're good to go. Uh, and also, if you're making a custom mixture, you can save that on there. So there is a lot of benefits uh, of using that uh, wet palette. All right, so I'm still uh, I'm kind of painting all his gear around his waist parts of his belt uh, around his waist, and then also, uh, like I said, all the strapping, holding his swords and, uh, and stuff. And I plan on doing that on all the miniatures. So we're just going to carry that same uh, leather brown color. Now that fine brush I'm using, just, just a side note, that's an army painter side brush. You can see it's well worn in. <laughs> I've used it quite a few times. But uh, I like it, uh, the tip of it stays nice and pointy still. So now we're going to move it to a desert yellow. And I decided uh, that I'm going to uh, paint uh, some of the guys' uh, hats this, this color. So uh, again, this is kind of how I plan things out. I kind of just take the biggest areas first and slap those colors in. Uh, and then the details come later. I'm probably going to do a few of these guys with uh, with this uh, desert yellow. On the hat underneath, it's a little trickier because you try not to get it onto the face. <laughs> uh, but it's not bad. I mean, I've not had too many issues uh, um, spilling paint on on the on the person's face or anything like that. Now, I do plan on, uh, uh, like, these colors are all bright right now, you probably noticed, uh, but I do plan on adding washes and then re-highlighting it afterwards with other colors, so. All right, so now we're going to move to an oak brown. Uh, oak brown I usually use for uh, the, the bottom of the guns or the, uh, the end, the butt of the rifle, uh, and the actual sheath uh, that the swords sit in. So the strapping, I use the leather brown, but then I like it's kind of like a two-tone wood. I have this uh, other uh, brown that I use, uh, the oak brown. And so it is a much darker, rich brown. Uh, I can get some good effects with that uh, when, when I highlight it later um, using that lava orange, which uh, we'll cover later in this video. So the guns are pretty tricky. They're small. Uh, kind of just paint the bottom of it and, uh, like I said, the butt end of it. And then, as you can see, I'm doing that sheath uh, on the sword. Uh, some of the guys I, I did uh, paint the actual bait, uh, the, sorry, the uh, belt around their waist that color as well. And some of them I left the, the leather brown. So I kind of just made some changes mainly if it's uh hard to distinguish between two things and i really want to make it a, a little different color uh then i i will uh is, is some of these uh some of these miniatures have a lot of belts let's just put it that way uh and sometimes i like to offset them by uh, painting them different colors so they're more uh, defined and there's a few of these miniatures i'm planning on I sometimes use that uh, brown, oak brown, uh, to color in their hair. I can add highlights afterwards, but uh, lay in that dark brown. On this particular miniature, I did his mustache, uh, his mustache, sorry, and his uh, eyebrows and, and uh, some of his hair. Just figured once I got the color out, might as well add it in there. I do add quite a bit of this uh, oak brown to uh, some of the other miniatures as well. So this is really the first steps of me starting to paint their faces. Uh, in this particular set of unit, uh, this miniature, uh, two of them have the guns pretty close to the face. So it's it's harder to paint the faces on those miniatures. Uh, more I just used uh, washes to shade it. 
um, and did some of the color of the hair around uh, then actually painting faces. Most, uh, if you have a rifle and you're, you're, you're winking anyways with one eye, so you wouldn't be able to see too much uh, eyeball action going on there. Um, so I, I did end up painting a little bit of the eyeballs on this particular miniature that I have in my hand right now. Uh, and then of course the one running, uh, we are going to paint that uh, face on that uh, miniature. And, you know, I would say at different times I've done that first where I painted the face and got it over with, so, or I waited later. Um, you know, it just it depends on how I feel about certain things that I'm painting or I'm painting his hat or whatever, and I, I figure that uh, it's a good time to paint the face. Now, that's something that uh, I've worked on for a long time to improve, and I, I think I've gotten some techniques that I think are fairly decent uh, to you. Uh, get some reasonable uh, <laughs> eyeballs on there all right so uh moving to gun metal and of course i'm going to do all the rifles uh parts of the end of the of the sheath of the sword i uh, end up doing the buckles on the shoes uh and i do add a little bit of uh you can't see it in the, in the camera here but uh, close up to the miniature there is uh their pistols and I, I do add that to the barrels or pistols as well. I do plan on going back, uh, as I usually do with my rifles, I add uh, uh, greedy gold uh, to a few parts on the gun. I just like that uh, different play of different metal colors on the gun. Now, it looks pretty bright right now, um, but once you add, uh, I'm going to be adding a, a soft tone wash over top. Uh, and that will really mud it up and dirty it up and it'll make it look a little more rustic and a little more accurate you know, what we're looking for. If you just leave the metal on there, it's a bit too shiny. Um, doesn't look quite right. So you can see I'm doing the hilt of the sword a little bit on there. Uh, and then the ammunition like uh, cases that are on the back of them, I add a little bit of um this uh, gun metal on there as well all right well so we'll probably move on uh, i'm not going to show you me uh painting all the miniatures with uh this gun metal i just wanted to explain uh what i was painting with that with that particular color so now I'm going to add that next Christmas color. <laughs> well, in army green is not really a Christmas color, but green is a Christmas color. Uh, and I decided uh, that I'm going to add stripes. I don't know if uh, if anybody's seen a lot of my miniatures. I love putting stripes on their toques and stripes on their hats and stripes on their pants. And I put stripes on their coats and shirts. And I don't know. I just I like adding uh, a lot of different uh, colors like that. So I decided to cover color this guy's toque, uh, uh, this army green. Uh, there's one of the miniatures I didn't paint a red coat. I do plan on painting it at this army green color uh, as a coat color. And then I'm going to add stripes uh, to all of these miniatures. I'm just painting this. Uh, he's got kind of a, a hat on. I do plan on adding some stripes to that as well. But uh, we're going we're gonna to do a different color than the pants. So I'm just pointing at the pants. Uh, I'm planning on doing this. So really I use a fine brush. Try not to have too much paint. As you can see, I put some paint on my hand there. Um, and really I just kind of draw a straight line down where I think... Uh, it would uh, lie. Now, the real trick is to make sure you space them uh, apart properly. Uh, you can space them too close together, and then it doesn't look quite right. Um, you got to make sure you put enough uh, equal amount of space between the stripes you're putting on. Uh, in this particular miniature, it's a little easier because he's standing up, uh, but there's another one that's squatting, and uh, their their knee is bent. So you kind of would have to follow that stripe you know, in kind of an L shape, really, because um, it's following his leg all the way down. Um, 
so this took some practice. Uh, you know, I wasn't uh, the first miniature I put some stripes on. Uh, it wasn't great. <laughs> took a few times to get good at it. Uh, but make sure your, your paint is nice and uh, wet. Don't use dry paint because then it's really hard to spread it. When you're doing lines like this, you want your, your paint to be really nice and smooth. Um, and you want to have enough on your brush, but not too much on your brush. So you're making blobs. Um, like I said, it takes a few times to practice and get it right. Um, and then, of course, the spacing I mentioned earlier. Those are kind of the crucial steps to getting stripes right on, on, on their pants. And, and when you're doing the stripes, always pick colors that are complete contrasting. So obviously we put a nice uh, light white on there. So we want a pretty a dark color over top. Don't go to a lighter yellow or something like that. or uh, it, it just gets lost in the pants and you don't really see the stripes. So you want to make sure it's a really defined. As you can see here, I really defined the difference between the two. So just planning, I'm planning on doing all of them. So now we're moving to the greedy gold, as I mentioned before. And we're going to hit some of the gun accessories, the uh, top of the sword, um, the other, uh, those, uh, ammunition clips and stuff that's on the, well, it's not a clip, <laughs> but the little, where they keep all their, uh, extra, uh, ammunition. I added some gold on there. And then the very ball end of the, uh, their pistol too. So yeah, I, I go ahead and add a lot of, uh, detail. That oak brown, I put a little bit of oak brown on those pistols and I added that, uh, gun metal. And then on the uh, trigger there, I kind of add a uh, gold as well. Just kind of really defines that pistol on the miniature. Um, sometimes it can get lost if you paint it all one color. Um, especially with these, uh, freebooters because they have lots of gear on the front of them. Uh, I really took the time to separate the colors on there. So there will be a point here in the video because it, it, you, I'm pretty far away from the camera and you can't really see what I'm doing. Um, but I will uh, do a checkpoint where I, I bring them a little bit closer to the camera so you guys can see uh, how each miniature is going and, and the choices I made on some of them. Now, these are the choices I made. Doesn't mean you have to do the same thing. Um, you can use totally different uh, colors, uh, but these are the colors I chose to pick on here. Um, but the same uh, thing would apply. Let's say you're doing blues. Just chunk it out on the model first uh, and then uh, get those base colors, the main amount of paint on there, and then you start adding the details in afterwards. Yeah, just add that gold. And uh, I add it to that top of the sword. Sometimes I'll do, uh, even on that, uh, he's got a little satchel around his waist there, I'll add a little gold button on there. There's a little button on there I usually painted gold. So just showing you kind of uh, the sword and everything I've added to gold too. Now at this point you could do the belt buckle. I think I did uh, the belt buckle around his waist. Uh, the other buckles that were on the uh, letter, I went with the, uh, the gun metal. And there we go, there I'm adding that button that I mentioned. So now I'm going to go to that uh, dynamic yellow, that one I use for the lanterns all the time. And I'm just going to add, uh, so around where the, the, around the coat, I put some black sleeves on there and I'm going to adding some yellow details on there. So, uh, on the coat, when I painted red, I didn't actually show that, but, uh, around the, uh, the cuffs, I painted it black, um. Uh, just to define uh, where the end of the coat is. Uh, and it kind of gives it more of an English feel. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of their coats had black and yellow or black and white uh, as colors on, on their coat. Um, I also decided to do the 
the band around the hat in that bright yellow as well. All right. So just showing you where I put the yellow. So I plan on hitting those other uh, miniatures as well. I also put the stripes on uh, so that, remember I put uh, that army green on there. I use that yellow to put yellow stripes on, on that uh, hat. And usually how I do it is I just put a little spot on the back uh, and then uh, I, I fill it in with the rest. So right now I'm using that uh, race bone uh, and I'm kind of just filling the eye sockets in. So I'm painting the face on this particular miniature. And I'm not too concerned that uh, the white spots are big. And in, in the past I might have. Because <laughs> if you leave it, you get kind of googly eyes, right? But uh, what you can do is... Uh, you can lay that in there, and then uh, I will lay the black in. Now, the, when I put the black in, I kind of make it just a stripe line. Uh, and I find that it's easier to paint the eyes that way. So uh, where the white is, you make a black line in the center of it. And kind of make them even so uh, you can kind of see where the, uh, where the eyes are going to be. Uh, and then what I do is I, uh, I go back to the flesh color. And it's a lot easier to uh, paint around uh, the eyes uh, and uh, fill it in that way. So I've always, in the past, of uh, trying to make a careful white blob and then a careful black blob in the center, uh, and my eyeballs didn't come out too good. Uh, but I, I picked up this technique from watching some uh, videos where they just put the white down first, and, and, and they put it on pretty big. And then they just made a black line through the center, and that would be the middle of the eye. And then they went back to the flesh color and just filled it in uh, around. Uh, and it, it works much better that way. It's much easier for me to control it. And I would say in probably the last maybe 10, 15 miniatures I've done, I've done this technique. I wish I would have uh, been doing it all along. But there's probably miniatures I can go back and hit that flesh color on and, and uh, tighten up some of the eyes on some of those uh, miniatures. The dreaded eyes. Now, you can skip that step if you want. You don't have to put the eyes in there. You can just put leave the wash on there. Uh, and it does a pretty good shading on the face, and, and, you know, it just implies there's eyes there. You don't have to fill it in. I just decided on this I would uh, take it a little step uh, further. So uh, what I did in here is uh, this guy's got his mouth open. Uh, I kind of just added a little bit of that uh, uh, dragon red to some of that uh, uh, white there, uh, that race, uh, race bone, sorry. Uh, and I kind of made like a pinky color. I just wanted to make his mouth, inside his mouth, look a little bit pinkier, give it a little, little more lively. <laughs> So I'm just going to show you, get it closer up to the camera. So you can see that worked out pretty good. Uh, and all I did was those two white blobs and did two black lines in the middle and then filled it in around with the flesh color, that barbarian flesh. Uh, and uh, I was able to uh, uh, get decent eyes on this guy. And I'm pretty happy with those. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of an update and show them a little bit closer to the screen so you can see uh, what the miniature looks like. So you can see the colors are pretty bright right now. We just kind of slapped all the colors on, um, and it's uh, it's pretty bright. I just want to note uh, that uh, I did add that desert yellow uh, to their socks. As you can see, their socks are painted uh, desert yellow. Uh, just so you're wondering what color I use there. I'll just give you an update on all the miniatures and what they look like right now. So I just chunked out all the colors.
So there's kind of a, a four-step process that I do, uh, the priming stage, uh, and then I chunk out all the colors stage, and then I move to washes. Uh, and really, it's just one wash. I usually just use, uh, you know, soft tone right there, soft tone wash, and it covered, uh, strategically cover the, the miniature in certain areas. So all the metallics I'll cover completely, um, and I, I do cover most of the miniature. I try to stay away from the flesh colors because I've already added a wash to it already. Um, I don't add more washes to the base. Uh, but when I add this on, I'm using that uh, uh, flathead square brush again. Uh, and uh, once you slap it on there, the only thing that I would say is uh, before it dries, just kind of try to um, soak up some of the, the pools. Uh, that you create. So once you put quite a bit of wash on there, you leave pools everywhere. Uh, best way to do that is I just dry the brush out and then stick the brush right in the pool. It usually will suck up all the all the paint, the excess paint you got going on there. So you might have to mess around with it a little bit. Um, uh, as you can see, I just put a little bit on the top of the hat. I didn't want to put a ton on. So I. I don't dunk the whole miniature in it. Uh, I know that Army Paint Painter has that where you can dunk the entire miniature in, in, a, in a wash. I, I'm more uh, strategic of where I place it. I want to control a little bit more where the shading is. Um, so I don't just cover the entire miniature in a wash. I, I, hit, I hit a lot of areas, but as you can see, I'm actually placing it in specific areas to make it darker. Uh, and then as uh, it goes, uh, I mean, it, of course, the wash kind of drains into certain areas and it does eventually have some puddles somewhere. So you kind of have to work them a few times. Sometimes I'll move from miniature to miniature. I'll lay the wash down on one then move to the next miniature. And by the time I get back to the fourth one, I can start soaking up some of those puddles that have been created. But this will kind of give everything a dirty aged look on everything on your miniature. Uh, and then once that's all dry, and I actually let uh, the washes dry for 24 hours. You probably don't have to, but I like to. I like to keep it like really dry uh, before I start adding highlights in afterwards. I don't want that wash to be wet uh, when I go back and highlight things. I want it to be completely dry. So you can see I'm expending a lot of time in here. Uh, just trying to get the amount of wash right. Uh, but I think it's a, it's a pretty important stage. There we go. So I got it pretty well where I want it. Uh, and uh, it's looking pretty good. So then I plan on hitting all the other three. This is kind of after they dried. So you can see uh, it leaves kind of a dirty look to everything, uh, but it also leaves a bit of a sheen. Uh, but once we added some of those other colors onto it, we'll get rid of a little bit of that shine. I uh, just kind of want to show you how it looks uh, after the dry washes are uh, dry. So kind of another check-in spot. And the last one. All right, so now we're going to be ready here for uh, adding some more finer details in. So we're going to go to a pure red. So if you've kind of watched this channel for a while, uh, you can know that I, I go from dragon red to pure red. Those are my two tones I, I use. Now, if you really want to go to a really extreme, uh, and I've never even gone there yet, but at some point, uh, it's really the more layers you put on, the more authentic and, and it'll look. I, I only stick to the two colors, um, but uh, but you, you do have that wash in there as, as a, also an additional color. So you really got kind of three colors going on on there. So I use that same flathead, and I'm kind of dry brushing it on, really. Um and just kind of hitting the raised areas on his coat. Uh, and sometimes uh, on the shoulder or on the elbow, 
I'll actually uh, add a little bit extra. I like I'll brush it on a little heavier and not take as much off the brush. And then after that, I'll go in with the fine detail brush and uh, put a line or edging on every all the raised folds in the coat. That really uh, brings it out. And this also kind of takes away the shine of the wash. So washes kind of leave a, a sheen to things, and uh, um, this is a coat, so you want it to kind of have a more of a flat matte finish. So uh, adding this uh, color over afterwards uh, addresses that uh, sheen on the uh, on the wash. So I, I do plan on doing the same technique on all of them. Uh, and uh, just really uh, add another layer of highlights on to uh, their coat. There we go. All of them. So the reason why I'm going back to the army green is uh, like uh, once I've had the washes to those stripes, I've actually darkened them a little bit. So I wanted to go back and, and kind of highlight the stripes a little bit more. Uh, so I go back and add army green back over top. So now it, it looks brighter because we've there's a washed version of it underneath. So all you have to do is go back to the same color, uh, and you've uh, already had added another highlight to it. So we're gonna kind of uh, so we have a, multiple tones on his pants where the stripes are, and I kind of just make a line through the middle of the stripe that already exists. Now, it's a little bit easier now because we already have our stripes down. <laughs> so we're kind of just tracing back over top of them, but it's kind of staying to the center of the stripe. Um, and that way you got kind of a, a highlighted uh, stripe. So I'm just kind of showing you what I'm doing here. You might not be able to see it. Oh, there we go. A little bit closer for you guys to see. Now, we are going to uh, hit those white stripes as well. I'm just showing you the green is first. There we go. We're going to go back to, uh, again, to that uh, race uh, bone uh, white that we used. And we're going to go back and highlight. So on here, uh, I where the ruffles are, I definitely highlight it completely. And in the other areas, I don't hit it as much. But uh, so you can see where there's ruffles in the pants. I make sure to hit those uh, with a, a, a lot of the paint. And then I kind of drag the brush through the rest of it just to make it a little bit lighter in there, but uh, still keeping some of those nice uh, uh, weathered look that I've added from uh, the washes. And again, this will uh, also take away the sheen of the wash. So adding more paint over top. These uh, paints dry matte, these other ones. So to show you, I'm planning on doing all of them, same way. So this is Lab Orange, uh, and this is my favorite color to use uh, to give aged a leather. So on your belts and on your gun hill, uh, on the hilt of the gun and all that stuff. Uh, sorry, the uh, end of your gun. Uh, you can give it kind of a weathered look to it. So I kind of use a, an older fine brush that where the hairs are kind of yeah, they're kind of messed up because i've used it so much i don't end up throwing those out i i use those brushes uh for this very reason and i get some of that orange level orange take a little bit off of my finger because you don't want to put it on too heavy because then you're just gonna have an orange belt you just want to highlight it in certain areas i usually do it in the center of the belt uh on, if he's got a satchel bag on the edges of the satchel bag uh, and it really gives it a, a aged uh, leather look to it. And same with the uh, um, the end of the gun, the butt end of the gun. It makes it look uh, like it's been worn. So right now I'm doing that satchel bag I mentioned. Uh, one day, hopefully, I'll get uh, better gear here and I can do a close-up of the entire paint job. I think it would be a lot easier for you guys to see than me having to pull up every time. But 
Um, hopefully you can see that orange detail on there. Uh, it's just a subtle weathering of the leather. So it shouldn't look orange. Uh, then you've added too much on there. So I'm just showing you, there's a better version I can show you a little bit closer. So you can see how it looks a little bit weathered on there on the on his belts and stuff. It really adds a lot, a lot to the miniature, I think, adding that uh, orange in there. So I am spending a lot of time on this uh, on this particular thing, <laughs> but I really just want to emphasize on it. Uh, it it really does uh, add a lot. So yeah, you could probably see a better angle in this one, uh, and how I do it. So now I'm doing that butt end of the gun I mentioned. All right, so we'll probably uh, move forward here. Uh, you don't need to see me do every miniature. Uh, I just kind of wanted to show you uh, exactly that uh, technique because I, I think it adds a lot to your miniature. All right, so now we're going to go back to that uh, pure black multi-surface paint. And really what we're doing here is we're going to paint the edges of the miniature. And uh, just the bases. So I'll go all the way around with it. Uh, and I like the, the craft paint. It's durable. Um, the bases are going to you know, be bumped and moved around a lot. So it's good to have a more durable paint on the bottom there. Black's black for the base. I don't... It, I mean, you could add another matte black over top if you want to get rid of a little bit of the sheen, but it's not bad uh, on there. And that's really what I do. It's a good opportunity to touch up the boots if you want to add a little bit of black to the boots um, after we uh, just added all that uh, fur brown in the first. Uh, there's some of the... I sometimes leave the fur brown in some of the ends of the boots because it looks kind of like a weathered boot. Uh, but in some areas where it's really uh, apparent, I will I will cover it out black. So here's the final product. I just kind of want to show you. You can see on the coat all those highlights and the leather. Uh, kind of going through each one of the miniatures and showing what the finished product looks like. Really happy how these turned out. Uh, they look really good. Uh, and uh, pretty well got accomplished what I wanted to in this. I'm just showing you the, all the different colors and, and how that looks when it's completed. I particularly like this one. I think this is my favorite. <laughs> I think it turned out the best, I think. I really like the, the way his green coat looks and his black. And the, the weathered leather looks really good on this miniature. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this and, and uh, found some useful tips uh, for painting your miniatures. Uh, so next up for these rebooters is going to be shipped off to their new owner. So remember, these are a gift for a community member, and I hope they get some good use out of them. All right, uh, so if you guys like what we're doing here in the Punter Den, make sure you uh, smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Punter Den and get first-hand information on when I work on these projects. All right, everyone. I hope everybody enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.